On July 31st of 2020, it was widely reported by the gaming press that the president of Sega, a man named Kenji Matsubara, had unexpectedly quit as the president of Sega for unknown and wholly mysterious personal reasons. No further context is given. We're just left to make our own inferences. Oh my god, Sega's going out of business! It's dead! <laughs> it's finally dead! <laughs> but, is any of this correct? Who exactly is Kenji Matsubara? What did he do at Sega, and what does his sudden resignation mean for the future? First, let's just see what happens if you look up President of Sega on Google. What you'll find is that there are apparently many different presidents of Sega. Here's Ian Curran, president and COO of Sega of America. Here's Hideki Okamura, president, representative director, and COO of the Sega Corporation. Oh, and here's Haruki Satomi, president and CEO of Sega, hanging out with Maito Fujioka. That's the son of Sega Sanchiro. Remember Sega Sanchiro? Back from when Sega was awesome? Anyway, what's going on? Who are all these people? And where's Kenji Matsubara? If the president of Sega just quit, then who are all these other people? Well, it turns out, ladies and gentlemen, that Kenji Matsubara, the guy who quit Sega, isn't actually the president of Sega but rather, he's just a president of Sega. In fact, there are actually a few presidents of Sega. How does that make any sense? To understand what actually happened to Kenji Matsubara and what he really did at Sega, we need to examine the sad history of the real Sega company's demise nearly 20 years ago and explore the batshit crazy world of Japanese corporate structure where everyone gets to be called a president or a CEO with an rigid hierarchy of absolute deference to a single authority. This is the true story of Kenji Matsubara, the former president of Sega, and why he really left. In 1984, the same year Tetris was invented in the Soviet Union, Sega as we know it came into existence when a Japanese software company known as SCSK bought the arcade manufacturer Sega Enterprises from Gulf and Western Industries. SCSK founder Isao Okawa appointed Hayao Nakayama as Sega's first CEO. It is Sega, as a subsidiary of SCSK and under the leadership of Hayao Nakayama, that constitutes the real Sega. That is, the Sega that we all know and love. This is the Sega of Yu Suzuki, AM2 and the revolutionary superscaling arcade cabinets. This is the Sega of the Master System, the Mega Drive, the Sega Saturn and the Dreamcast. This is the Sega of Yuji Naka and the original Sonic the Hedgehog. This is the Sega of Tom Kalinske and the so-called console wars. This is the Sega that for a time beat Nintendo out of their virtual monopoly in the home video game market. This is the Sega that gave the world Shinobi, Golden Axe, Fantasy Star, Alex Kidd, Streets of Rage, Virtual Fighter, Panzer Dragoon, Jet Set Radio, and the skies of Arcadia. If you've ever said to yourself, I love Sega, then there is a 99.9% .9 chance that it is the SCSK era of Sega particularly with Hayao Nakayama as CEO, that you actually have in mind. Hayao Nakayama resigned from Sega in 1998, after the failure of the Sega Saturn. The company would continue on, releasing the much-beloved Sega Dreamcast in 1999, but years of corporate civil war and rushed, costly hardware launches took a heavy toll. In 2001, SCSK founder Isao Okawa died, but before he died, he forgave Sega Enterprises many debts to SCSK and returned $695 million worth of stock over to Sega Enterprises in a last-ditch effort to save the company. However, it wasn't enough. The Dreamcast was discontinued by 2001, 
and the once mighty Sega was reduced to the status of third-party developer for the Microsoft Xbox and Nintendo GameCube. In August of 2003, the death of Sega finally came in the form of a hostile takeover by the Sammy Corporation. Hajime Satomi, the founder of Sammy and one-time friend of the deceased Isao Okawa, was a pachinko magnate in need of a better image and an alternative source of revenue. Pachinko is an incredibly popular form of gambling in Japan that's comprised of a pinball-like slot machine game. You pull a lever and drop a ball bearing onto a game board, hoping to score a jackpot that releases more balls. Like at a casino, each ball has a monetary value that can be cashed out at the player's discretion. Despite gambling being completely illegal in Japan and heavily associated with organized crime, pachinko parlors are everywhere, existing by way of a legal loophole rooted in the fact that players exchange their winnings for prizes instead of actual cash. Yes, just like at Chuck E. Cheese. However, this loophole hasn't completely protected pachinko from government regulators. And for years, the vast pachinko industry, an industry worth hundreds of billions of dollars, has been under fierce criticism by the state for allegedly bolstering both vice and crime. By purchasing Sega Enterprises, along with their relatively wholesome arcade business, the Sammy Corporation was able to not only diversify their investments in the event that Pachinko was finally made illegal, but they were also able to completely rebrand and salvage their seedy image. Thus, in 2004, the Sega Corporation was no more, and in its place, the broader, entertainment-oriented Sega Sammy Holdings Corporation emerged. Under the banner of Sega Sammy, Sega, initially known as the Sega Corporation, was now one of a wide variety of subsidiaries owned by Sega Sammy Holdings, which included such enterprises as arcades, amusement centers, resorts, and even an animation studio. But let's be clear, from here on out, we're talking about Sega in name only. Sega was dead, and as it turns out, it wasn't coming back. Ever. Over the years, the Sega division at Sega Sammy would be arbitrarily divided up, reorganized and renamed numerous times. But in the beginning, former real Sega Enterprises president, Hideki Okamura, was assumed into Sega Sammy top management, and a new team of managers was appointed, at least temporarily, to handle various aspects of Sega's former business. Toshiya Tabata took over the arcades, Hiroshima Yagi took over arcade game development, and most noteworthy, former Sega manager Yukio Sugino took over as the executive manager of research and development, which still retained top names from Sega's glory days, including both Yuji Naka and Yu Suzuki. Before Sega was killed off by Sammy, it had been divided into nine semi-autonomous development teams, some of which are still highly regarded to this very day. Sega WoW, also known as Overworks, Sega AM2, Hitmaker, Sonic Team, Smilebit, and Digital Rex, which was only recently started by Yu Suzuki. However, in 2004, soon after the buyout, it was announced that most of these development teams would be dissolved or consolidated into a uniform research and development team. On paper, this was to increase efficiency, but in reality, this was Sega Sammy's way of making large cutbacks and reorienting their resources away from console games and back toward the arcades and amusement centers, which is why Sammy bought the brand in the first place. Teams like Smilebit, which developed classic games like Jet Set Radio and Panzer Dragoon Orta, completely ceased to exist. And Digital Rex, which had been working on the third Shenmue game, saw what work they had done completely abandoned. Yuji Naka, the creator of Sonic the Hedgehog, would leave Sega by 2006. Yu Suzuki, the lead creator of Sega mainstays like OutRun, Space Harrier, Virtual Fighter, and of course Dynamite Ducks, would be gone by 2011. Sega wasn't just dead by this time, it was buried, dug up, and then its grave was unceremoniously desecrated. Don't believe me? Then try playing Sonic 2006 sometime and tell me what you think. This is the Sega of Kenji Matsubara. Not Sega, but rather Sega. An ever-morphing ragtag corporate pachinko parlor disaster that hasn't produced anything really all that noteworthy in over 16 years outside of the never-ending Yakuza series, Persona 5, 
which was technically done by Atlas, and Sonic Mania, which was also not done by Sega. It was done by these guys. These guys don't work at Sega. So who is Kenji Matsubara? And what is he to Sega? I mean, Sega. Kenji Matsubara originally joined Sega Sammy in 2014 as both a member of Sega Sammy's overarching board of directors as well as a chief technology officer at Sega. In 2012, the Sega brand underwent one of many corporate shakeups that are sometimes described as restructuring. At the time, PC online games and mobile games via the overwhelming prevalence of smartphones appeared to be the future of gaming. Therefore, Sega established another subsidiary brand called Sega Networks that was intended to capitalize on both of those growing markets. Kenji Matsubara was essentially brought in to help Sega succeed in that endeavor, and initially, thanks to Fantasy Star Online 2 on iOS and Android, the plan looked like it might work, and Kenji Matsubara himself was extremely promising, with a professional and academic pedigree that on paper would have been too good to pass by. Kenji Matsubara graduated from the University of Tokyo with a master's degree in engineering in 1986. He then worked as an engineer for Hitachi through the rest of the 80s and into the 90s. However, in 1993, Kenji left Japan for the United States in order to study for an MBA at MIT. In 1997, armed with years of corporate engineering experience and a top-shelf MBA, Mr. Matsubara landed a job as the Vice President of Oracle Japan. Then, in 2001, he landed a job at the game development company Koei where he was put in charge of mobile gaming. Eventually, he ascended to become the global president and CEO of Koei. However, at the time, the company was seriously struggling to be profitable. And in 2009, in an attempt to bolster the company's resilience in an increasingly costly video game market, he helped facilitate a merger between Koei and Tecmo, the creators of Ninja Gaiden. This resulted in the creation of Koei Tecmo in 2010. But it didn't work, and Kenji Matsubara was either fired or asked to leave by November of that same year due to continued operating losses for the company. Even after a merger, Tecmo Koei, the company behind Dynasty Warriors 1 through 9, still kind of sucked. In fact, when Kenji Matsubara left Koei Tecmo in 2010, the gaming press reported at the time that the self declared cause of his departure was personal reasons, which is of course the exact same thing he said when he left Sega Sammy on July 31st of this year. And just as Koei Tecmo was floundering at the time of his departure in 2010, so too is Sega Sammy floundering right now. But that's okay because Mr. Matsubara found himself failing upward to become the president and CEO of Zynga Japan. Zynga is a game developer whose entire business model is dependent upon the utilization of the functionality of social media platforms for their games, especially Facebook. In fact, just Facebook. In fact, let's be real, Zynga is really only known for one game, and that's the monster hit Farmville that dominated the casual gaming scene back in 2009. Again. In 2010, the future looked bright for mobile and social media based gaming, and so Kenji Matsubara found himself in a great position for the future. Until of course Zynga of Japan completely went out of business in 2013. After that, Mr. Matsubara took a break from video games and the business world altogether. For a few years instead, he worked in academia, doing research and lecturing at both the University of Tokyo and Keio University, respectively. Given Sega's interest in a mobile gaming division and Kenji Matsubara's academic pedigree and experience with mobile gaming at both Koei and Zynga, it's obvious why Sega Sammy's top management would have sought him out. So in 2014, Kenji Matsubara joined Sega Sammy at first in what appears to have been a consulting role, since it seems that during the same time period he was still actively involved in university teaching and research. But then in 2015, in response to a $125 million loss in profit, Sega Sammy went through one of its many restructuring processes. 
The Sega games division saw some growth in mobile gaming and digital game sales, but lost big everywhere else. Some 300 people lost their jobs. Haruki Satomi took over his father's job as the president and CEO of Sega Sammy. The Sega Corporation that was created in 2004 was then dissolved, as was the subsidiary Sega Networks that Kenji Matsubura had worked at. In their place, Sega Sammy established two new separate subsidiaries, Sega Interactive to handle their arcade business and Sega Games Corporation Limited, which essentially housed everything else, including both console and mobile gaming. 2016 turned out to be a magical year for Sega Sammy. Persona 5, developed by Atlas, yet another subsidiary of Sega Sammy Holdings and officially subordinate to Sega, turned out to be a major hit. So did Yakuza 6 and Bayonetta 2, which Sega had published. In 2017, Sega Games Corporation Limited and Sega Interactive were both moved out of their old office in Oda, the office that once housed the real Sega that had been operated under SCSK. Sega would now be housed inside Sega Sammy's brand new corporate headquarters in Shinagawaku, and the old Sega building was demolished. Two other major developments occurred in 2017. Kenji Matsubara was promoted to being president and COO of Sega Games Corporation Limited, Sega Sammy's non-arcade division. Also, at the same time, Sega Sammy formally announced to their investors a three-year management plan called The Road to 2020, which set lofty financial goals for the entire company that would officially end in March of 2020. Going into 2018, sales for console games actually looked pretty good, but profits fell 70% short of expectations due to a failing mobile gaming market. Going forward, Sega games under the leadership of Kenji Matsubara played a safe hand, producing yet more Yakuza and more Persona 5 related content. They also announced intentions to bring over the At Games miniature Sega Genesis to Japan, a project which would eventually morph into the Sega Genesis Mini, and they also formally announced the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Pretty classic. But by the end of 2019, just a few months short of the Road to 2020 deadline, the writing was on the wall for Sega. The Road to 2020 was projected to be an unmitigated disaster, with the company falling short of every possible expectation. As a direct response to this, Sega Sammy announced yet another emergency corporate restructuring of Sega. This time they set out to dissolve both Sega Games Corporation Limited, of which Kenji Matsubara was president and COO, and Sega Interactive. Instead of two or three subsidiaries, there would now be only one, SGC or the Sega Group Corporation. Consolidating both subsidiaries into one new company effectively meant the termination and or demotion of executives who no doubt bore the blame for the failure of the Road to 2020 campaign. Once again, while console games performed as expected, the mobile gaming enterprises at Sega, such as the lamentably broken and poorly received Sega Forever initiative, continued to bleed money. And it wouldn't have been lost on upper management that this occurred under Kenji Matsubara's watch, nor would they have forgotten that it was specifically for mobile gaming expertise that he was hired for in the first place. Starting in 2020, right around the time the COVID-19 crisis began to really impact the world, Sega Group Corporation would have a completely new management team, with some positions being eliminated entirely, including Kenji Matsubara's role as president and COO of Sega Games. Essentially, the new management structure entails a complete takeover of Sega by the management team from the Sammy side of the company. And while the new president and COO of Sega Corporation is technically Sega veteran Yukio Sugino, who headed the now defunct Sega Interactive game division, the real authority at Sega now resides with Sega Sammy corporate president Haruki Satomi himself, who has named himself chairman and CEO of Sega. And while Kenji Matsubara also formally retains the title of president, the reality is that he was demoted to being the company's chief publishing officer, 
and the company's representative director for the Sega-owned West Studios. He did, however, retain his position on Sega Sammy's board of directors, which means he gets to attend more meetings than most people, and that he probably also gets free bottles of water and those little pens with the Sega Sammy logo on them. So, if Kenji Matsubara left Sega Sammy for personal reasons, then those reasons might have something to do with the fact that he was demoted and that the company division he headed was formally eliminated just months ago. But to be clear, Kenji Matsubara was never, ever the head of Sega. Though he had the word president in his job title, he is actually one of a collection of presidents of a subsidiary that answers directly, now more so than ever, to the actual president of Sega Sammy, who is none other than Haruki Satomi, the son of Sammy founder Hajime Satomi. And let's be clear, Kenji Matsubara never really worked at Sega. Sega's been dead and buried since 2003. Rather, he worked for a company that used Sega's intellectual property, logo, and legacy assets in order to bolster their investment portfolio and politically whitewash the fact that they're mostly known as a gambling company that produces tons of pachinko machines and pachinko parlors. It's Sega in name only. I mean, just look at the games they do now. It doesn't even look like Sega anymore. The news about the president of Sega suddenly quitting his job is incredibly misleading. That being said, things are still looking pretty bad for fake Sega too. It looks like their iconic arcade in Akihabara, established in 2003, is going to be permanently closed due to a drop in attendance from COVID. And that makes me wonder about the stability of Sega Sammy on the whole, given the fact that the company's livelihood is mostly rooted in arcades, pachinko parlors, and resorts, the kind of places that were hit hardest by the global pandemic. I also wonder about Kenji Matsubara himself. It's tempting to assume that he's just a bad manager or a bad business executive when looking superficially at his track record. He left Koei Tecmo just as it was financially hurting, and when he headed Zynga Japan, it completely went out of business. Then there was the failure of Sega's mobile division. After being brought on board to salvage it, and eventually the console division as well, the company basically tanked. Sega Forever was just an awful and confused effort. Also, he actually wanted the terrible At Games Genesis brought over to Japan. But to his credit though, At Games was dropped, and the excellent Sega Genesis Classic was produced instead. And to be fair, how much ruin could he have possibly been responsible for in under three years? Sega barely put out any games in three years, and most were probably already under development by the time he got there. His real problem might just be a bad habit of jumping from sinking ship to sinking ship. Either way, I hope the best for him. He's fluent in English and seems to know and love the United States. Maybe he'll do something cool over here. Maybe he's got something original planned. Either way, this guy is crazy accomplished and I'm sure he'll pop back up in the news soon enough. And as for Sega, I mean, Sega? Perhaps the real reason Sega keeps failing is that it's not really a prioritized effort on the part of its parent company, Sega Sammy. After all, former Sega Sammy chairman and founder Hajime Satomi never wanted the company for anything more than the arcades and the arcade games to begin with. The console division was almost completely jettisoned from the get-go. Today, Sega is only known for Yakuza, bad 3D Sonic games, and re-releasing lots of Genesis games all of the time across every platform. Their richer history and legacy is almost completely abandoned, if not for the efforts of smaller developers, fans, and the excellent Sega Ages series that's done by M2. It should come as no surprise that the two best Sega games to be made in recent years, Streets of Rage 4 and Sonic Mania, are not even made by Sega at all. If Sega has a future, then it no longer necessarily resides in Japan or with the official company bearing its name, but rather with the people that know and love it. Perhaps the best thing that could happen to Sega and its rich legacy would be for Sega Sammy to ultimately give up the endeavor. 
to let Sega go, either into the public domain somehow, or as an acquisition for a company that's fully dedicated to game development. Actually, Sega Sammy not long ago was looking at going into the casino industry. Hideki Satomi seems to be rethinking his father's attempt to distance the company from gambling. If that direction works out, then perhaps Sammy will lose interest and divest themselves of Sega completely. Maybe there actually is something to the discredited rumors surrounding Microsoft and Sega. Years ago, after the failure of the Dreamcast, Sega was nearly acquired as an exclusive developer for the Xbox, a failed opportunity if there ever was one. With new hardware on the horizon, wouldn't a similar deal be beneficial to everyone? Or has the Sega brand been irreparably harmed by years of abuse and misuse? You tell me. Either way, I'm sure we'll find out soon enough. So, what do you all think? Please let me know in the comments, and thank you for watching. Bye!